the question I asked was, if I could only keep one of these, if I could only keep one Les Paul, which would it be? I have a real soft spot for this guitar. For the brand conscious, at least, this would be the, the choice for a gigging musician. Gibson, just put the poker chips on because they're really fiddly and people hate having to do it themselves. Thank you. think of nothing cooler than, than someone ripping the arse off a, an Epiphone Les Paul on stage. That's, that's what I think, I didn't, that's what I think, I'm sorry. Well, it's, look at it, I mean it's a fantastic looking guitar isn't it? If I could only keep one Les Paul, which one would it be? Hello everyone, thanks for joining me today. <laughs> You're very welcome as always, it's good to see you. So today as promised, I'm gonna look at a whole bunch of Les Pauls, five to be precise, all from the Gibson Corporation, so they're all official ones, they're not knockoffs. They're proper licensed Les Pauls, which obviously includes from Epiphone. And uh, well, this is the lineup. First off, got the Epiphone Les Paul Standard 50s. This is from the Inspired by Gibson range. Current retail price of this one in the UK is around about 500 of our English pounds. And this one here, is the Epiphone Limited Edition 1959 Les Paul Standard. Current retail price in the UK, around about 750 pounds. Although this does come with a quite nice, uh, lovely hard case. And then the first Gibson in the lineup is this Les Paul Tribute. So this retails around about 1,000 pounds. And this is the entry level uh, to Gibson Les Paul ownership, I do believe. This one comes with a actually quite a beautiful soft, ple I'm going to say pleather case, not leather obviously, but it's a, it's a really nice plush black pleather case. And it also does come with a poker chip, but you have to poke around quite a lot to try and find that, which I did eventually. And then moving on up the food chain. So this is the Gibson Les Paul Standard. Proper Gibson Les Paul Standard. This is the 50s. Current retail price in the UK, around about £2,300. Does also come with a hard case, although I'll be honest, it's not as nice as the Epiphone ones. And finally, the daddy of all the Les Pauls. <laughs> this is the Custom Shop 1958 reissue, or R8 as we know it. So this one here, currently in the UK, they sell for around about £4,000 new. And I guess this is probably the entry level to custom shop Les Paul ownership. You can pay a lot more for these things. This also comes with a, a lovely, uh, a nice uh, hard case. <laughs> nice hard case, as it absolutely deserves. So that's the five Les Pauls we're going to look at today. Um, what we'll do is we're going to do a fairly, a fairly detailed, you know, nerdy detailed line a look at these today. We're gonna we're gonna get right into it. The only thing we're not going to do is we're not going to take them apart today. We've done that. All these guitars, all of these guitars have been reviewed independently or compared with other things on this channel. So I'll put all the links in the description box below. If there's anything in this comparison that I don't cover i'm pretty sure i've covered it elsewhere so you know have a look in the you know the other films and and i'm sure you'll find what you're looking for having said that we're going to go into a fair amount of detail we're going to measure the necks we're going to look at the profiles we're going to measure the pickup outputs properly we're going to weigh them 
uh, weigh everything and um, and we're going to play them obviously we're going to play them side by side and do plenty of sound comparisons so that really to 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 give us all an idea of you know what the physical differences are and and what if any the audible 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 differences are Okay, so now let's plug them in and, and start having a listen, shall we? Try and uh, liven it all up a little bit. Um, and what we'll do is we'll mix it all up. We'll mix up the nerdy data with some playing, some bits and pieces. We'll do different things. We'll have some clean sounds. We'll have some dirty sounds. Um, and uh, we might even have a punk riff or two. So stick with us. If there's anything specific you're looking for and you haven't got time to stick around and enjoy the ride, timestamps are all in the description box. So have a look. Work out what it is you're looking for and go and have a look at that. If not, stick with us and uh, let's get nerdy. Let's just discuss the what for many is the elephant in the room, the mahogany, what they're made out of. We all know that Gibsons and Epiphones are made out of a different species of mahogany. I've recently done a little bit of research and spoken to Gibson and Epiphone about this and I've been told that whilst Gibson used to use Honduran mahogany, m more recent years they've been um, using mahogany sourced in Fiji, whereas the Epiphones as we know, they, these Epiphones are made in China and their mahogany is uh, sourced locally. And that's all they're prepared to say. Um, we, we think maybe Philippines, but, it, you know, it's, it's, it's where they can get it. They obviously do know what they're doing, though. Um, the weight of these guitars is very consistent. And I have been assured that only the best quality tone woods are used. And I think it's safe to say, well, I'm happy to I'm happy to accept that clearly epiphone know how to make a decent guitar they've been doing it for long enough and um they do really care about this stuff so um yeah i'm sure that i'm sure they're looking after us the weight of these guitars is very consistent so let's just do that now let's look at the weights side by side uh before we go any further okay so the epiphone les paul standard 50s weighs eight pound 14 ounces or 4.04 kilograms. The Epiphone 59 weighs 8 pound 13 ounces or 4.01 kilograms. The Gibson Les Paul Tribute, as we know, weighs less at 7.7 .7 ounces, 3.39 kilos. And don't forget, this is one with weight relief. The Gibson Les Paul Standard 50s. Eight pound, 11 ounces. 3.94 kilograms. And the Custom Shop R8. Weighs eight pound, 12 ounces. 3.99 kilograms.
So yes, as you can see, the weight of these is very consistent. So there's obviously some thought gone into it. Um, we know that the Tribute's lighter because it's got modern weight relief. Also, this is a lot thinner. The Tribute's thinner. Um, I've measured all of these guitars um, he, about here. I don't know what that bit's called. Bum, I don't know. This bit here, the back side of the guitar. I've measured it at the back side of the guitar. The Tribute here measures, including the maple cap, 47 millimeters. Now, what I didn't realize is that the Epiphones are also a little bit thinner than the Gibsons. Both of these Epiphones measured here uh, come in at 50 millimeters, including the maple cap, whereas both the Gibsons are 52 millimeters. Now, I think that's down to the maple cap being thicker on the Gibsons, which may explain how, why they sound different acoustically. Um, do they sound different acoustically, I hear you ask? Well, yeah, let's have a listen. I'll just play a couple of simple chords. Big open E. And a G. And a D. Just straight away, you can hear how different that is. Unplugged. And I think what you, you know, what you prefer would be quite a subjective. This sounds sort of tighter. Let's hear the 59. This sounds like the other Epiphone, doesn't it? It's, it's kind of... It's kind of got a more open ringiness to it. It's the Gibson Tribute. Bit more like the Epiphones. And the R8, this again sounds like the Gibson Les Paul standard, doesn't it? It's got a tighter. It's only this little mic here that you're hearing it through, but I'm pretty sure you'll be able to hear the difference. So what we'll do, let, that's unplugged and you can hear a difference. I know you can hear a difference. Let's just plug it in and do exactly the same and see if you can hear the difference with it plugged in. So we'll back, we'll back the, uh, the pups off to um, eight. Tones right up. Both pickups. That's interesting. The I can hear less difference there. The 59 and the Les Paul standard 50s. Obviously, they've got the same pickups in. And obviously, these pickups are different as well. These are custom buckers.
So close. Let's play a little bit more. And we'll talk about how the guitars feel. So we've established that this is this is lighter, the tribute. And it's slightly thinner. I'm not sure you notice that. Maybe you do. Maybe you would notice it. And the neck on this is kind of a medium. Let's um Epiphone 59 feels great. It's got a nice satin neck. Neck feels nice. I don't actually, I don't think it's a, a million miles away from the tribute or vice versa. I've always said this is quite a chunky neck. It's not compared to the R8, obviously, but. Feels nice. Gibson here, you can, you're holding a, a Gibson Les Paul standard, doesn't feel a great deal different to any of the others that I've held so far, it's got a sticky neck, Let's see what it sounds like. Phone Les Paul Standard 50s. This is the one that started this all. It feels like a proper Les Paul, and it's the cheapest one in this collection. It should be quite a long way away from a couple of those at least, but it's not really. And then, of course, we've got the daddy of them all, the Les Paul R8. This was the first custom shop guitar that I ever bought, on interest-free credit, I might add. And, and obviously, I felt very pleased with myself when I bought it. It felt great. It feels really nice, really good. It makes you feel really good to own a guitar like this. But I'll be honest with you, it doesn't feel a lot different and it doesn't sound a lot different to any of these guitars here and if anyone tells you otherwise I don't believe them and don't believe me you know if try it yourself people will stick up for guitars like this if they own them a bit people that own 
the more expensive versions of Les Pauls will always say they're brilliant. They're way better than anything else. You know, they're way better than the Epiphones. And, and they need to, they, certainly they need to justify their position on, on owning these things. Uh, you know, that they've got something better. Um, I'm lucky enough to own all of these, you know. And, and I can be honest. I can be honest. I've got my widget out. Let's uh, let's have a look at the uh, neck profiles and measurements. I'll put them all up on the screen together so you can compare. So there you go. There's the measurements. They're all 43 mil at the nut, and then there's not a huge difference. But as as I predicted, the tribute has got the slimmest neck of them all, and the R8 has got the fattest neck of them all. Yeah, have a look at that. It's not a huge amount in it, but you can feel you can feel the difference. So the tribute's not not what you'd call slim, by any stretch of imagination. It's you know it's a proper it's a proper chunky neck. And moving on to the next, the Les Paul tribute here has got a one piece maple neck. The Gibsons, both the Gibsons, the Les Paul Standard and the R8 have both got one piece mahogany necks. Whereas the Epiphones have got scarf joints on the neck, so they're not one piece necks. On either of these, the Les Paul 50s or the 59, you know, they've got scarf joints and they've got heel joints down here. Um, it wasn't until Lazarus came out last year that uh, the uh, innovation of one piece necks on Epiphone was uh, introduced to the world. I suspect they'll be going in that direction a lot more in the future. And talking about the necks on these, the custom shop, the R8, has a vintage correct long neck tenon. And so in fact do both of the Epiphones, whereas the other two Gibsons don't have. Fingerboards. All the Gibsons have got rosewood fingerboards. The R8, they go as far to say Indian rosewood. Very fancy. And the Epiphones, are, they're both Indian laurel. I'm just looking at the, the frets on these, they all look they all look really similar. I don't have the scientific equipment or capability to actually measure them, but they all do look very same. Very same, very similar. <laughs> they're they're called medium jumbo on everything, so you know I'm gonna I'm gonna go with their, you know they're pretty they're pretty much the same. They don't specify what the fret material is or anything on these Gibsons, so we can only um, we can only imagine. The nuts on these, now they're all graphite, except for the R8, which is nylon. Right, so let's measure the pickup output, shall we? Uh, today, uh, I've got myself an LCR tester, so I'm gonna measure the 
inductance as well as the the outputs. Um, this is thanks to Dylan Talks Tone who who posted a, a really interesting video about the various pickup readings and what they mean. So I'll put a link in the description box. You should check that out. It's uh, some really cool stuff he does there. So right. So let's start on the neck. <laughs> he said, I'm pointing at the bridge and I said, neck. I, why do I? Why can't I just get that right for once? Let's start on the bridge. That's this one here. That's the bridge. That's that pickup. And it reads 8.22 kilo ohms. So I'll put all those readings up on the screen now so you can look and compare those if you want. They're all pretty, you know, within a within a reasonable margin of each other, aren't they? As I say, if you want to find out a little bit more about what the inductance means in relation to uh, the other readings, check out check out Dylan's video. hardware, the tailpieces and bridges, uh, the Epiphones have, have got what I would call heavyweight standard Epiphone tailpieces which weigh in at around about 70 grams each and the bridges on the Epiphones are weighing in at um, 46 grams. The Gibsons have got much lighter weight tailpieces uh, which, which I think are aluminium and they, they weigh about 32, 33 grams. The bridges on those are the ABR1s, the Gibson style ABR1 uh, tunematics, which weigh a little bit more than the Epiphone ones. They weigh around about 55 grams each. And then on the Let's Pull Tribute, uh, as we discovered, that too has this really lightweight aluminium tailpiece, uh, weighs around about, well, we weighed that at 35 grams last week. And the bridge, the bridge is the Nashville style tunematic, which is wider than the all of the others, uh, but it, it weighs a lot less. So presumably that's maybe aluminium. That weighed in at a remarkable 29 grams. So you know, quite a lot of difference on the on this one here, the the Les Paul tribute. So yeah, just another one of quite a few differences on this particular guitar to the others. So there you have it. That was that. That was quite a lot of information to take in, wasn't it? So, well, well done if you're still here watching. If you've watched all that, I hope, really do hope you found it found it interesting. Really, there's you know a lot of stats there, a lot of um, a lot of you know comparisons. So how you can you can see in timber and bits of metal how these guitars compare. 
the most important thing is, of course, how you feel about the guitar and how the guitar makes you feel, I suppose. Because each of these guitars will mean different things to different people. And we must recognise that. There's no, there's no better guitar amongst these five. You know, you cannot possibly say that one is better than another. All you can actually definitively say is that one is more expensive than the other. What is really important is which one you play, really. Um, that's, that's as far as I can see. As far as I can see, that's the only thing that matters. Which one of these are you going to play if you own it? So if you're trying to decide which of these to buy, you've got to look at what your motivation is. You've got to decide what you want it for. So that's absolutely key. So let's talk about how each of these guitars makes me feel. And again, this is only me you'll be very different, but hopefully this can give some kind of context to the conversation. So let's look at, let's pretend I can only keep one of these guitars. I probably won't only keep one of them, but let's pretend I can only keep one and I have to sell all of the others to finance more guitars. So what would it be? Let's see how I feel about each of them individually. The Epiphone Les Paul Standard 50s, the gold top, I have a real soft spot for this guitar. It's such a great guitar. This is my go-to guitar, my go-to Les Paul. I, I play this more than any of these others. I take this home um, frequently to, to play at home if I'm, if I'm maybe working on something to, to play any Les Pauls here. I like to try and get familiar with the feel of the guitar with the piece that I'm trying to play. So if I need a Les Paul, I'll take this one home. It's, it's that thing that you can just take, you know, it, 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 there's no, I've said before, there's nothing invested, massive invested in it financially. So it's very easy to love. I think this is potentially the coolest guitar of all of this lot. If I was going to gig a Les Paul, if I wanted to be really cool, I'd use this one. I think it would make a statement. I think these guitars do make a statement, particularly if you can play them properly. I'm not sure I can do that, but, you know, I can think of nothing cooler than, than someone ripping the arse off a, an Epiphone Les Paul on stage. The limited edition 1959. It's a, a kind of a step up, step up in the financial stakes and in, in some of the specs than the, than the gold top there. So yeah, this has got absolutely, you know, we know it's got real pucker, you know, electronics. And um, so it really does take that to a next level. And the only reason that I choose the gold top over this is because of the gold top. I'm just not a massive fan of the, the veneers that they, that they put on Epiphones. And hopefully, and I know there's a lot of people feel the same, hopefully they'll start to introduce tops that they don't feel the need to hide. I think there are a lot of people that do, I'm not, I'm not knocking it, I like, you know, it's actually quite authentic. It is quite authentic, actually, if you look at it next to a real one. But it's a maple veneer, and I personally would rather see the natural beauty of a guitar rather than feel that it's being covered up with something. Apart from that, this the neck on this is to die for. And the sound of this is to die for. Now there's an interesting clip that I just watched in the edit where, where we're listening to the, the custom shop R8. And for that moment, you're, you're, lis you're listening with your eyes. You're thinking, oh yeah, that sounds really good. That sounds really good. And then it cuts over to this one. And it sounds exactly the same. You go, oh, <laughs> it's kind of a wake up. Um, I'll show you.
I think that shows you how great this guitar sounds um, and feels, and it, it feels every every bit like a Gibson Les Paul. The Les Paul Tribute. It feels great to play this. It's a something about it's, it is quite different to the others. It feels different because it's a different weight. It sounds a little bit different to all of the others. Sounds more like an Epiphone than the Gibson Standard, I think, because I think it's brighter. It's got a certain brightness about it because it's slightly thinner and it's got the maple neck. Maybe that's something to do with it. But I think that for the brand conscious, at least, this would be the, the choice for a gigging musician. If you're gigging, you know, and you want the name on the headstock, this is the one. This is definitely the one to go for. But if you really feel like you want a, a Les Paul standard, a Gibson Les Paul standard, I don't think this will ever scratch that itch. I think, I just don't think it will. I, I know it wouldn't for me. You know, I've done this before and, and, and I've heard from a lot of people that have, and have done the similar things. You know, a lot of people say, well, they wanted a, a Gibson Les Paul standard. So they bought an Epiphone and then they bought this and then they bought that. And then they ended up buying the Gibson Les Paul Standard anyway because they were never happy um, that they, because they didn't have a Gibson Les Paul Standard and, and that's the way this works, isn't it, you know? So for the gigging musician, yeah, absolutely. This one, the tribute or the studio. I haven't reviewed a studio yet, but I realize now that I must. So that's good. Something to look forward to for me, of course, not you. Um, so yeah, for the gigging musician, this one, because it's, it just makes more sense really. It's, you know, less, less to worry about, you know, in the, well, for most musicians, the sort of gigs that most of you are gonna be doing you know, you don't want to be having to hang on to a hard case the whole of your, the whole of your um, evening, which actually takes me nicely to the soft case. This is a soft case you get with it. I didn't show it in the review. It's brilliant. You know what? It's really, really good. It's really good. And actually, oh, and incidentally, the poker chip is now on the guitar. It wasn't in a review. It was hidden. It was right down the bottom of this pocket here. And I finally found it and screwed it on. Gibson, just put the poker chips on because they're really fiddly and people hate having to do it themselves. Thank you. Um, it's a really cool case though. Really cool. Gibson Les Paul Standard. This is the 50s, which has a slightly nicer neck than the 60s. Yeah, and surprisingly, it doesn't have the long neck tenon in this. But it's, uh, well, it's, look at it. I mean, it's a fantastic looking guitar, isn't it? And this is a nice weight, this one. And it, sound, it does sound great. As far as the guitar's concerned, it, it's, it's probably what everyone wants, but as far as what it stands for, it's not necessarily what everyone wants nowadays. There's been so much negativity about the, the Gibson brand over, you know, in recent years, in the last, well, it's throughout its history probably, but certainly for the last five years, there's been a lot of negativity. You know, they, the, the, they, they do seem to cater a lot too much for the well-oiled, <laughs> for the rich, for dentists and lawyers. 
most of us mere mortals can't afford these things. And I include myself. I, I've been lucky enough to accumulate some nice guitars, mainly by taking advantage of interest-free credit, which is my version of saving, but I do it in reverse. So that's how I bought this. And um, I'm probably still paying for it, actually. <laughs> People will say they hold their value, though, Gibsons. You know, oh, you'll get your money back. You'll make a profit. Well, that, that's really... I think that's nonsense, to be honest with you. I mean, relatively speaking, um, there's no difference between Epiphone and Gibson. You, you know, it, it depends how long you'll hold on to a guitar, really, and, and how much you paid for it. So, I, you know, I paid, what, I think I paid 2200 for this. Um, I'll... If I hang on to this for five years, I might get 2200 I'll probably get 2200 back for it. I paid 500 quid for the Epiphone. If I hang on to it for five years, I might only get 300 quid back for it. But at the end of the day, I've had 1700 quid in my pocket through that five years. I'll have made more than 200 quid on that if I invested it, wouldn't I? If you want a Gibson Les Paul standard and it's within your means, then I, I recommend you try and get, get one and experience it. Because until you've done that, nothing will, nothing else will really do. You know, you'll always want a Gibson Les Paul standard. Once you've owned one, you can put it all into perspective. And uh, if it, you know, it, you can sell it again, you know, once you've experienced it. If you think, well, actually, I play my Epiphone more, sell your Gibson. You know, you'll probably get your money back, or you might, or you won't lose much. So that's my suggestion. The custom shop, the R8, these guys, these start at this one. I think I paid 3600 for this. They're, the entry level now is about 4000 and then... They go up, you know, the Murphy Lab ones, you can pay 10 grand. Silly, silly money for, for one of these. Um, and, and as you've seen, the sound-wise, they don't feel very much different. You know, if I could say, honestly, this, the, the thing you notice about this straight away is that it's got a really chunky 1958 neck. And, and I don't always, it's quite chunky and I don't always love it. Um, sometimes I do, but it is maybe it's not the most comfortable guitar to play because of that, and because it's a Les Paul, and Les Pauls aren't that comfortable anyway, I suppose. Really, it's a great thing. It's a thing of beauty. Obviously, if you've seen the, um, the you know, if you're into sunburst Les Pauls and you've seen the book, The Beauty of the Burst, and if you follow those things and you watch. Um, you know, you watch this stuff on YouTube and you read about these things in magazines. Owning one of these is great because you can go, oh, yeah, I've got, you know, you can look at it hanging on your wall and you can feel really good about it. And it does make you feel really good to own something like this and know that you've got a, a burst, albeit a reissue. Um, and I've thought, I've thought a number of times about selling this because I don't actually play it that much. I haven't quite managed to to let this one go. And I've sold quite a few other custom shop guitars that I never really play, because you do. Look, I mean, I use this analogy. I, I, I like motorbikes as well. And I've got a couple of bikes in the in the garage downstairs. And I've got um, I've got a Yamaha 600, you know, old bike that I bang around on. And I've got a beautiful mid-90s Ducati 900 Super Sport, which is just absolute work of art. But I ride the Yamaha, you know. You know, every now and then, if the if the if the planets are in the in the right position and the sun's out and and I'm in the right mood, I might take the Ducati out for a spin. But you know what? It doesn't get used very much. And that's the same with this. It hangs on the wall and it looks great, and it's a lovely thing to own. And it and it makes me feel I don't know. I've succeeded, I suppose. I don't know what it is really. But at the end of the day. It's a lot of money tied up in something not to play. So I would say, 
don't buy one of these if you think it's going to be any better than the others because it's not. It might look better. It is a work of art. Art's great. If you, if you can afford to spend money on pieces of art, get one of these. Be prepared to lose money when you sell it because you will. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. There's too many of these around. Too many people have, in, have invested thousands in these things and need to sell them because they need the money. So the, the second-hand market for these is rubbish. Um, I've lost money on all, every custom shop guitar that I've bought and sold. It's a real shame, but it's true. So, so that's my two pennyworth, as they say, or they used to say. Don't think they say it anymore, do they? But I just said it. So that's me, me two pennyworth. And it's only my opinion, of course. It's just a bunch of guitars. And um, I'm very lucky at this point in time, I, I own all five of them. I will be selling some of them probably. Um, if I can steal myself to do that. I find it di very difficult to sell guitars, but I will be selling some of them. But the question I asked was, if I could only keep one of these, if I could only keep one Les Paul, which would it be? I've thought long and hard about this. Um, and there's, well, there's two answers, okay? The first one being, it would be, this one. I don't know why, but it has uh, something about this that I really like. I really like that I reach for it more than any of the others. And um, there's just something cool about it. And it doesn't owe me anything. So, yeah, really, that's, that's what I think. I didn't, that's what I think. I'm sorry. Sort of disappoint you, and don't go saying, "Well, you're crazy because the others sound so much better and they play so much better and they feel so much better." Well, they don't. So there you go. Second answer, if I could only keep one Les Paul, which one would it be? This one, obviously, the Les Paul. There you go. Thanks ever so much for watching. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Well, it's been my pleasure. I don't know about you, but uh, come back next week. Join us again. See what we're up to then, eh? All right. Cheers for now. Thanks.